This Halloween, we find out, are vampires real? Do you drink people's blood? Correct. Oh, I am nervous! Their love lives. Sex is very disgusting. That's an emotion that I've just kind of gotten rid of. Their families. So who were you setting on fire? Well, that was my son. My son. An all-new tire starts now. Crazy new HBO series about about vampires called True Blood. I know y'all have heard of True Blood, right? Oh, yeah. And they've got this like yeah. off the hook, insane ad campaign. Check out these posters that they have for the show. Ooh. It's like top model vampire, yeah. <laughs> and they're smiling with their fangs. Okay, everybody's obsessed with that book series Twilight. You guys heard about Twilight? It's this yeah. book series. <laughs> Wow, yeah. It's about an ordinary teen girl who is madly in love with a vampire boy. And there's even a big movie coming out in November, a Twilight movie. So some people totally believe that vampires are real, but I've got to say, I'm not so sure. And that's why we're doing a special Tyra Show vampire investigation. <laughs> so let's meet a man known as the Vampire King, Don. Come on out, Don. <laughs> You, but I'm nervous. Me too. Oh my god, I'm gonna hug a vampire. Ah! Oh my god, he has the teeth too. Sit down. He's got the teeth too. Okay, does anybody notice like how I'm dressed today? It's like I'm like child. I am nervous up in here. Same here. Oh, you're nervous too? Of course, you have a live studio audience. And you're nervous? Like, you have these fangs that can dig into my throat right now. Yeah, and... but usually I'm quite the hermit when I'm at home. So. Oh, you're a hermit? Yeah, quite a bit. Usually, I heard the Vampire King thing. Those who are in my circle usually call me the Emperor. But at the same time, um, oh. I usually try to keep myself away from the regular energies of society and things like that. The you know, regular so that energies. Can, so that way I can focus on my studies. You know? Okay, so we're, we're regular. Oh, well, I wouldn't say regular. Like we're not vampires. Uh, correct. When you're a little boy and your teeth fell out, mm. did those teeth come in? Like how my molars came in? <laughs> Let's see them. Did those come, did those come out like that? No, they're all filed out. You, oh, they're filed out. But they were, did they grow that long? Or did you not add exactly. something they're to added, it? They're added, yes. There was a little bit added. Okay. So, gosh, I'm looking at you on the monitor. Put those on face. Wow, you look scary. <laughs> you look like that movie Vampire Lestat. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Like, and sometimes, like, when people try to be vampires, they put, like, all the makeup on and stuff. Correct. You don't even I wanted have... to make sure that I reflected things in the, in the correct atmosphere. But you, you know? don't even have the makeup on and stuff. You no, just no. have the face like it's a vampire. Natural. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, let me get back to this. So, y vampires are, are real? Yes, we are a real community that exists. Um, the practice has been around for a, quite a long time. Um, I should lead in to say that um, you have the Hollywood movies and things like that that actually cast a certain negative stereotype. Um, we are, uh, you know, some of us actually have a uh, religious faith, I guess you'd say. What's yours? The, uh, I'm an eclectic. An eclectic would be someone who would... I thought he was going to say, exactly. I'm a Pentecostal. Well, if you were to... <laughs> Now, if you were to define an eclectic, it would be a person who would study up on all the different main religions of the world to be able to get a higher perspective or understanding, I guess you say, of the okay. higher being, you know, that we all are connected to. And there's three different types of vampires. Yes, there is. Tell me about uh, the first type. The first kind would be considered a blood feeder. The definition would be called a sanguinarian. And the sanguinarian, as they feed on the blood, the blood is a rudimentary means of being able to transform the life force energy, per se. So tell me, what's the second type? The second kind would be the psychic vampire, what we call Psy for short. And that would be a person psychic. who has 
pretty much gone away from the blood. Uh, blood these days is considered a taboo subject, you know what I mean? And you know, it's blood, you know? Um, it's just blood. But at the same time, uh, it's a transference of the life force energy uh, without touching someone or just by laying of the hands and such. Okay, and then the third type is the hybrid, which and means both. Yes. Which uh, type are you? I am a hybrid. You're a hybrid. Correct. So you drink people's blood. Correct. <laughs> Actually, let me expound upon that. It wouldn't be anybody who would, you know, of course anybody can catch, you know, certain things like HIV and any other types of diseases and such. I uh, wouldn't want to be feeding off of someone who, per se, has uh, any type of psychotropic drugs inside of them and such, you know. Psychotropic, that, what does that mean? Uh, Break know, it down. Well, you'd have Vicodins. Heron. Yeah, heron, crack. whatever. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, okay. definitely wouldn't, you know, just as you wouldn't either or whatever. Um, oh, just like I wouldn't either. Just like I wouldn't bite somebody's neck that had some drugs in them. Tyra. <laughs> okay. I know you're nervous. You're not nervous now, right? You didn't no, know it was no. going to be funny. You thought I was going to attack you. No. I'm not going to attack you. You're going to attack me. Okay. <laughs> um, so how do you get the blood from people? Okay. Um, the blood is pulled from the vein, of course, with a lancet. What's a, a lancet, lancet again? Lancet. Uh, some people in the audience might be familiar with it, especially lancet. if they've given blood, usually hooked up oh, to like a Oh, like a needle, like a... A needle, oh. lancet. Okay. And it's usually um, within the main veins and such. And pretty and much we'd connect it over to an area, that, a receptacle or something like that. And like usually a glass. Just need and you put the like blood into a glass. Okay, we're going to check out how Don feeds blood from, from humans. For Henry, drinking blood is on one level a part of his identity as a vampire. But Henry claims that the need to ingest blood is also physical and tied to his health and well-being. I was expecting that reaction. That is crazy. <laughs> so what does it taste like? Um, it all depends on who you're feeding from. Some people have a higher iron content. Uh -huh. um, if you excuse my language here, but if you scare the crap out of somebody, and they have a high amount of adrenaline in them, you can actually get an adrenaline high that is actually absorbed into it. So do you scare people first and then bite them? No, that, that, <laughs> that, that'll be quite, you know, mean. I, I'm quite humane. You okay, know? you're humane, but you're not a human. Well, human body, but at the same time, but not vampire. spiritually. Correct. Okay, and how much blood do you drink? Um, if I were to do a feeding, it would be about one vial. One vial of blood, one like vial, when we go to the maybe duck. six inches long. Yeah, okay. About. All right. So when you drink the blood, you said it feels euphoric. It feels like like sex. It can, yes. Yeah. Okay. Do Do you have sex? No, I don't actually. I'm um, celibate. Believe it or not. No, I. So what do you mean you're celibate? I don't have sexual practices or anything like that. I don't have a need for it, really. It's quite human. It's an emotion that I've just kind of gotten rid of. You. So I study mostly priestly activities these days, so. So you don't you study priest activities? Yes, um, more on a spiritual edge, I guess you'd say. Okay, so are you ever horny? Not really. <laughs> I have, you know, I have in the past, of course, but at the same time, I've moved my mind away from that. So you don't have sex? I would think that in that movie, True, in the TV show True Blood on HBO, the vampires like are having a lot of sex. <laughs> there is this one scene. I think it was either the first or second episode, and the vampire is having sex with this one lady, and he's going. <laughs> like it was so scary. That was quite entertaining. So scary. Now the the clip that we watched was from um, National Geographic. All right. So it's this is you know National Geographic. Geographic is like real. You know when you're a little girl and you see that on the, on the coffee table of your mama's house, you're like, ooh, that's a real magazine. <laughs> so it's not like a game. Do you sleep in a casket? No, there's a difference between a casket and a coffin. What's the difference? A casket is something that has been brought over from Europe, and it's usually the thing that has the two different sections. Okay. And it looks a lot more modern. There's my coffin right oh, there. Oh, a coffin is That's one thing, one correct. top. Then that would be considered a toe pincher. That one right there is about seven feet long, about two feet tall. That one was custom made for me. And you sleep in that? Uh, from time to time, it's considered a sensory deprivation chamber. So you don't hear anything, smell anything? Correct. Okay, what's, the, what's this about all your birthmarks fell off? What does that mean? That's one of those things that just happens um, over time, especially through purification. I've done lots of purification practices. So the birthmarks my... fall off yes. in your body? Yes. Okay, I have a birthmark on my neck. Get really close, Scott. Like, you have to get so close. There's a birthmark. So if I was a vampire, that would be gone? If there were certain practices that you did for certain cleanses, yes, purification practices.